So I'm going to tell you guys something wild and crazy about the history of Israel that once you grasp, everything is going to start to make sense. So now back in 1948, shortly after the Israeli Declaration of Independence, when the political leaders were still seeking international recognition and legitimacy, Albert Einstein and other prominent Jewish figures wrote a shocking letter to the New York Times, essentially warning the world about a political party from Israel called the Harut, who they compared to Nazis and fascists, and they claimed was pretending to love freedom and be democratic, but was just the exact opposite. Now, unfortunately, the world and America did not take this warning serious enough. And not only did this political party come to dominate Israel, but they, in fact, control the government to this very day. Allow me to explain. So the most commemorated figure in Israeli history is a guy by the name of Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky, a non-religious Jew that was often recognized as a fascist and even called by his primary political opponent, David Ben-Gurion, as Vladimir Hitler. Now, aside from being the most commemorated figure in Israel's history, Zahev Jabotinsky was also the founder of something called Revisionist Zionism, which you may have heard about today as being the Greater Israel Project. Now, essentially, despite not being religious, Jabotinsky and his followers wanted a Jewish state that corresponded in its size to the biblical kingdom of Israel. And that goes way beyond the occupied territories into Jordan and beyond, guys. But to be a bit more specific concerning Jabotinsky's views, one need only look at his 1923 publication, The Iron Wall, in which he very frankly admits that yes, the Zionists were indeed colonizing Palestine, and they intended to oust the Arab majority, who at that time made up nearly 90% of the population, and replace them with a Jewish one, which he suggested could only be accomplished through a powerful display of force. And this is also one of the reasons why he's so highly commemorated today, because Jabotinsky played the lead role in the development of modern Jewish militancy. In fact, he helped found the Haganah and the Urgon, which later became the IDF. Now, in the case of the Urgon guys, this is a well-known terrorist group that you can go look up for yourself. They were responsible for infamous events like the King David Hotel bombing and numerous massacres, including that of Dai Yassin and the Dawaimi, where they were Terrible rapes, murders, babies killed, and things that are almost hard and unimaginable to believe. In fact, the Dai Yassin massacre specifically was mentioned in that letter from Albert Einstein and other prominent Jews in the New York Times. Now, aside from how horrible the Dai Yassin massacre itself was, what also makes it so important to understand historically is it was a key reason why neighboring Arab states declared war against Israel one month later. Now, another infamous Zionist terrorist group that worked alongside the Urgon in carrying out these horrific terrorist attacks was something called the Lehi. Now, the Lehi were founded by a Jewish radical that made Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky look like a Cub Scout named Abraham Stern. Abraham Stern was also a non-religious Jew, and this dude was so fanatical that he literally sought out an alliance on multiple occasions with none other than Adolf Hitler. And Abraham Stern, like Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky, has been commemorated with a town named after him and also a stamp issued in his honor. Now, although both Abraham Stern and Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky died in the early 1940s, their followers and supporters continued their legacy and played an instrumental part in the founding of Israel and the creation of the Mossad, the IDF, and the government itself. In fact, most Israeli leaders, they either come from the Haganah, the Urgan, or the Lehi, each group literally, not figuratively, literally being responsible for terrorist attacks, which is to say that the majority of Israel's leaders historically were involved in actual terrorist groups. Now, one of these leaders was a man by the name of Menachem Begin, who considered himself to be a disciple of Vladimir Zev Jabotinsky and became his successor. Like Abraham Stern, Begin was far more radical than even Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky, and it was under his command that the Urgon carried out those horrible, indiscriminate terrorist attacks during the Dai Yassin massacre and elsewhere. Now, in 1948, shortly after these horrific attacks, Menachem Begin, he got involved in politics, and he created the Arut Party. And this is what inspired Albert Einstein and those other prominent Jewish figures to write that chilling letter warning the world about this fascist Nazi-like political party, and they even named Menachem Begin. Now, unfortunately, he grew more powerful, and in 1973, he reorganized the Herut Party as the Likud Party. Now, as the founder and first chair of the Likud Party, Begin became the Prime Minister of Israel. 
and it was under his watch that it became open government policy to support illegal settlements in the West Bank, which was justified through revisionist Zionism claim to the biblical kingdom of Israel. Now, the second chair of the Likud after Menachem Begin was a guy by the name of Itzhak Shamir, who likewise became prime minister and likewise continued to expand their legal settlements with financial support from the government. Now, Shamir, alongside Begin, he was the leader of that terrorist group, the Lehi, during those horrible massacres such as Dayasin and Dawaimi. And can you guys guess who the third and current chair of the Likud party is? That's right, boys and girls, none other than Benjamin Netanyahu, whose father was, in fact, a personal secretary to Vladimir Zahev Jabotinsky. And Netanyahu himself has been described as, and I quote, the ideological grandson of Jabotinsky. And I want to make it very clear, guys. Whether it's Benjamin Netanyahu giving his 2023 presentation about the new Middle East, which has no indication of Palestine whatsoever, or the Israeli finance minister giving speeches behind a podium of a map that corresponds to the biblical kingdom of Israel, the Israeli government's agenda is to expand its borders. And this is why I've said, guys, and will continue to say that Benjamin Netanyahu's verifiable historical support for Hamas, the terrorist organization, is strategic. Because what it permits him to do is continue the legacy of revisionist Zionism and expanding the borders was presenting himself as being engaged in self-defense against this evil, horrible group that he's helping to prop up. So the next time you want to know why the Israeli government is so crazy or why it does the things that it does, watch this video, research this video, watch this video again, and research this video again. But more importantly, guys, is share this with others to raise awareness. Because if I can echo some more significant thoughts that have been attributed to the great Albert Einstein, it's that those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. Because what we are dealing with, guys, is a psychopathic, gaslighting state that hides behind religion and benevolence. And, oh, I'm such a good guy. And it's a great disguise. But inwardly, they correspond far more likely to the proverbial synagogue of Satan. But if there's one thing more powerful than the greatest of governments and the greatest of deceptions, it's an awakened public opinion that is now aligned with the power of truth. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo.